Hi all, welcome to the Docker Analogy series. This would be most likely the last video in this series as there is just one important topic left to be covered that is multi-stage Docker build. In this series so far in the previous videos we have covered almost all the topics which are under Docker. We have seen practical demos as well uh, around those concepts. In this video uh, we are going to talk about the multi-stage Docker build. We are going to understand what's the need for it, why it is so prevalent. Also, if you look at any production based Docker file, the Docker file that I'm ab about to show you would be a common site. And I want you to be prepared for anything that comes your way in the world of Docker. So let's get right in then. Imagine that you're working on Java based application. Now, what do you need to compile a Java based application, a JDK, right? Java development kit. But do you need it to run the Java based app? No, right? The JVM is all you need to load your bytecode created by JDK and you run the application using JVM. Also, there are many build tools. You can use, for example, Maven or Gradle to build your Java application. But you don't need them for running your application. And having those Maven or Gradle uh, files or JDK will only bloat your container with unnecessary data or files. You want your container to be lean and load your container with what is absolutely necessary. And for your Java app, once it is compiled by JDK into bytecode, you don't need anything else but JVM, which is already there in the part of the container. Now let's look at one of the examples. Let me open my Visual Studio code. So let's go through this Docker file together. You, you might be seeing this for the very first time. This is the multi-stage where we have this as a first stage and this is another as a second stage. No need to be scared of. I will walk you through with every single step, okay? Now, this is all we have seen earlier from Maven, uh, meaning Maven is my base image, okay? And this as is a alias that we are creating, alias as a build, so that we can refer this alias in the next stages of the build. And then I'm setting my working directory as a slash app. I'm copying my current uh, Java based application, okay, uh, into my working directory, which is slash app. And then I am running a Maven command called package. So if you haven't used a build tool called Maven, uh, Maven has uh, different functions or the or the task that you can invoke. So what I'm doing is I'm creating, I'm invoking a, a task called package whose job is to build the current application and then uh, package it, package into a war file. Okay, so this is my first stage into the build. Once this is completed, next stage starts. Now what I'm saying is I'm, I want to create an image called Tomcat. So I, I want to build an image from my base image called Tomcat. And what I'm going to do is I'm using this copy command. What does copy command does? I am saying I want to copy from where? From build. So I'm referring the alias here. I could use Maven as well, but I am created this alias for a more comprehension. And what I'm saying is copy from this. What file I want to copy from this source? I want to copy app target file dot war because Maven is eventually create a file under app directory. It will create a target folder and under that it is going to put a war file. And I want to copy this war file into my Tomcat web server because I want to host this web application or my web server into Tomcat. And I want to copy this under user local Tomcat web apps. Okay, once I put this, my war file will automatically be hosted. That is the fun that is the uh, function or responsibility of a Tomcat. I hope you were able to understand how the multi-stage build works. But along with this, we are going to actually take a practical example. Okay? We are going to practically look at one example, how this end-to-end -end thing works. And we're going to uh, create a React application for that. Okay, I mean, we're going to look at a Docker usage of multi-stage build in a React app, okay? Uh, we know that uh, the React or Angular are, are called single page apps, okay? When building any React application or Angular application, you need a node environment to compile the JS code, typically JSX or a SAT, 
SAS, Stylesheet and more into a static HTML, JavaScript and CSS. And if you aren't doing any server-side rendering, then you don't uh, even need a node environment for your production build. You can ship the static resources in a static Nginx container. Let's look at that example. Okay. So I have my local application running here. Uh, local, I just created a, a simple uh, React app here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this application. So the way to run this is npm run start. Yeah. So npm run start. Let's build this app. Okay. So application has started. Uh, I'm going to. So, it's, so application is started on localhost 3000. So you can see the application is started. Okay. Now, right now I'm using my command tool to run this application, but I want to dockerize this for my production. So I, I'm going to show you a Docker file which I've created and I'll walk you through all the steps. So what we're doing here is uh, we are creating, uh, we are using a base image as node. Okay. Then we are creating a working directory called slash app. We are copying my package.json into the slash app. Okay. And then we are running the yarn install or npm install. Either of it, it will work. Okay. So what this package.json will do, I mean, what, what this npm install will do, it will load all the dependencies that I have listed here. Okay. Once the dependencies are downloaded, I'm going to copy a public folder. And then I'm copying the my source folder. Once all of this is done, I'm going to run a uh, yarn run build. Re run build is present here. Okay. And I'm going to create the static files using this command. Also, I forgot to mention that I am using, I am using alias as a build here. Okay. So once this is done, once this process goes through, my build file or static files will be present inside a build folder. It will be created inside a build folder here. Okay. And in the next stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the nginx container, okay, because that is all I need to host this static application. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, is I'm going to copy from the build from this specific uh, image, I'm going to copy everything under build into user share nginx html. Now this is the host folder for nginx. So anything you want to host under nginx, you put this under HTML folder of user share nginx and then it automatically get hosted. Okay. And let's see how this all works. Let's close this. I'm going to first build this Docker image. So Docker build minus T, let's name it react app or let's name it react nginx app. So it is right now building this. So, so it will start from the stage one. So it, is, it has already started. It will try to see if the Docker file exists. If not, it will try to get it. Most probably I will have a Docker file. Uh, looks like I had a lot of things already there. So that's great. Okay. So my Docker container got created. Let's look at the Docker container. Okay, you can see the second step which was running. So stage one went through really quickly because I, I might have I might have had everything already there. Okay. The next stage kicked in. It copied that everything from the build into my into this container user share nginx. Okay. So if I look at Docker images now, okay, I should see. Yeah, I, I should uh, I'm seeing uh, React Nginx app. Uh, because I haven't given any version, so it uh, it came up with the latest. Okay, so let's try to run this Docker image. So right now we were running our application on localhost 3000. Okay, it is uh, if I refresh this, it, it wouldn't work because the server is started. But let's run this application now. So Docker run minus minus name. Uh, let's give it React nginx app. And then I want to map a port. So I want to run this on port 8080. Nginx will host uh, the, the container or it will run the app on port 80. I'm mapping it to my host port called 8080. I want to run this as detached. 
and the image I want to give is react nginx app and the latest version okay so you can see my point in, uh, my container went through if I do docker ps I will see this container is running okay and this is mapped to 8080 localhost so let me copy this here and stop 3000 I will make it 8080 now you can see my container is running properly my nginx container is running properly and my node.js application is hosted inside that and as you see uh, what I uh, what is what is the minimal thing I need to run my react application is a web server called nginx I don't need the entire node environment I don't need the node modules so if I copy all of them to this nginx it would be just waste of time or sorry waste of the space in the nginx container I want to keep my container very lean that's the reason uh, we can uh, that's the reason we need multi-stage build uh, we can build a specific things in a specific container and copy the required uh, build files into the container like nginx container where we want to host a web app same goes for the java app we had seen earlier i hope this helps you clear uh, or clearly understand what is multi-stage build how to use it and what is the use of it so i wish i want to wish you a best luck on this uh, on this docker journey i hope you learn a lot and you make use of the docker in your production uh, in your day to day life and day to day uh, professional life if you are uh, if you have any questions uh, i have already mentioned in description how how you can ask me questions so go ahead and ask me questions if you have anything and let's continue to learn and i'll meet you maybe in some other uh, tech series Till then, bye-bye, take care.